$18. How? Welcome back, everyone, to more creepy TikToks that would make you rethink reality. Let's dive in. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's possible that the Spurge used to be a doctor or a nurse and was probably trying to warn his son for his dad to be using that machine. You just never know. It's to meet me. How old were you? I was about seven years old at the time. And were you in the hospital? I was not in the hospital at the time. I was, I was in interim back and forth. to meet me. How old were you at the time? I was about seven years old at the time. And were you in the hospital? I was not in the hospital at the time. I was, I was in interim back and forth. You can't tell me that's not Michael Jackson's voice. I mean, what's the probability of Michael Jackson saving a young boy and for that young boy to grow up having the exact same identical voice as Michael Jackson. Is this a coincidence? School bus. Prison bus. School hallway. Prison hallway. School recess. Prison recreation. School food. Prison food. School teachers. Prison teachers. School dress code. Prison dress code. Technically, this does make sense. You know, for many of us, our educational years did feel like a prison. The only difference between a prison and a school is that, you know, after school, you can go home. Oh, this preacher right here, watch this. You can give the whole world a shot, but you still got people starving in a... Yeah, see, ain't nobody saying nothing. Oh, you gotta take this shot. You better take it. It's to save your life, and it's free. We giving it free because it's to save everybody's life. If it's to save life, why ain't chemotherapy free? Why ain't insulin free? If it's to save everybody's life. So it's to save my life? But you got people dying of malnutrition? And we can't plant a garden over there, but we can send shots everywhere around the world? Somebody better open their eyes! It was so safe, in fact, that they had to end up bribing you with a free Dunkin' Donut or a free McDonald's just to take it. Have y'all seen this yet? There is something falling out of the sky in Indonesia, y'all. They said this is Indonesia, but we can't tell what this is what is that y'all it is so hard to decipher what this is bro what okay y'all i zoomed in but it's still hard to decipher what this is that looks like a giant six though it looks like a giant six but what it looks like an eye in the sky bro what is that what is what is going on and you see all those people there wow some people are saying that it's a balloon with a satellite but i don't know any satellites that look like a phony in his condom <laughs>
reminds me of the old clips of the rake, but it's nothing to be afraid about. You know, if that was my mate, I probably sort of kicked him and fed him to the rake. Warning, some of you may think this is the worst thing you've ever heard in your life. In 2014, a 24-year-old British woman went on a trip through Cambodia and Vietnam. She rode a motorcycle, she went swimming, she went backpacking, and when she got back to England, for the next few weeks, she kept having mysterious nosebleeds. Even stranger, sometimes she could feel a tickle on her upper lip like the nose was bleeding, but then when she would go to wipe it away, there was nothing there. She started to believe that she had built up maybe a blood clot in her sinuses because she could feel a pressure and an itching up there. Once, while looking in the bathroom mirror, saw something dark kind of dangling out of her nose and went to wipe it away, and it went back up. She got to work examining it more closely and saw that what was dangling out of her nostril was a segmented tail. That's when she realized she had a leech living in her nose for the past month. She went to the doctor who started yanking on it with tweezers and says, it was agony whenever the doctor grabbed him. I could feel the leech tugging at the inside of my nose. But then it came free, the leech, which was three inches long and the size of a finger. The woman, who seemed extremely chill about the whole thing, asked if she could take it home, and she named it. Unfortunately, she says it did not survive because how would you even take care of a leech without, you know, sticking it back in your nose? You can imagine the amount of pain that woman would have went through having a leech up her nose, but I would much rather prefer a leech up my nose than someone leeching off me. Thank you. Lord, send down your mercy and your blessing upon us here and upon this house. Keep all, all who live here safe from evil. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to bless your home now and we'll see how we know how this helps you. Oh my goodness. Oh, Father, I'm so sorry. I, I really didn't think any of this was going to happen. Father, what should I do? I feel present. Yeah. I don't think I'm ready for this. I think I need to come back. Okay. All right. Oh my, oh my God. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Father. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, but you know, I'm not scared. Okay. I mean, I, I, we have to do something. Yeah, you know? I know. I need help. So I might need to speak to Okay, I'm so sorry, Father. Oh my God. Well, you try to have the same thing. Okay, you can call me if you need me. Okay. I will, I will. I'm sorry, Father. There was not even one ounce of fight in that priest whatsoever, was there? I mean, if I was that priest, I, was, I would have walked over that rocking chair, I would have slapped that demon in the face, and then I would have casted the, the holy water on him, and I would have shouted, Go to hell, you muppet. The very fact that this was allowed to take place on a train, granted people got up, but the fact that nobody even sought to stop it or say anything about Jesus, it shows the condition of America. People complain about whenever we preach in public. However, people are okay with this. Plus it's a fire hazard. If the train goes like that, the candle falls in flames. The way she screamed it sounded like she had about a thousand demons in her. If there was anyone that needed Christ, she's definitely one of those people like, you know, in the 50s and 60s, if this would have happened in the streets, they would have got shot down in a matter of seconds. Ah! Who do you think you are today? The more the more we learn about this, this covenant of God. <clears throat> what blood? The blood of this covenant, glory to God. <laughs> Cut the covenant with his father, God. Glory. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Like Moses of old. There's come, oh, 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 come in one. Oh. <laughs> Don't ever do it. Don't ever feel sorry for yourself. Don't ever do it. How absolutely stunning. It's just delicious. <laughs> it's so good. And he will be like Moses and he'll live. 120 years and he said, yeah, 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 preach it, brother, preach it, brother, preach it. Just before the cross. And we have a healing covenant. <laughs> mm. Dwells 
in me, the pure spotless blood of God. And as it was performed for me, he's my blood brother and my father is my friend. <laughs> And as he is, so are we in this world. Glory to God, I don't have it. I never will have it. And I don't mind telling you, I'll never be sick again in my life hereafter forever. Not one time. I will never say what? Gorgeous would be a better word. I don't know about you, but I'm convinced that man's a full-blown demon. I mean, the way he talks, the way he acts, the way he smiles, the way his eyes look, just look demonic, you know? And how can anyone go to a church like his and then come out of that sermon and say to yourself, that was a really good sermon, I feel more closer to God. I would feel more closer to the devil than the word God after that sermon. If you pay close attention, you can really see how busy they were back then. I mean, they were swept off their feet. You know, you compare that to nowadays. I mean, these days they're absolutely quiet. You know, you haven't got people left, right and centre coming in with no diseases or nothing like that. I mean, they're having the time of their lives right now, you know. Because back then in 2020, it was the worst time in history for them. The world is actually ruled by demons. In almost every major city, there are symbols for Lucifer. The headquarters of the United Nations is located at 666 United Nations Plaza, where there is plenty of demonic symbolism, such as this end-time beast. In the Bible, it is said that 200 fallen angels descended on Mount Hermon, and that the UN coincidentally has a base there. The craziest thing is that there is a huge pyramid in a city called Astana, which has been intentionally hidden from us, similar to the one on the money that controls our entire world. And in this pyramid, there are 200 perfectly aligned chairs. It's almost as if the 200 fallen angels have a secret base where they hatch their plans. In the same city, there is another torch representing Lucifer. This evil symbolism even extends to CERN, the state research facility, where there is a statue of Shiva, the destroyer of worlds. It's all just a theory, but the evidence is very convincing. I have a serious question here. We have the freedom of choice and we have the freedom to choose in what we want to believe in and that's perfectly fine. I respect that and I respect that in others as well. But what I get confused about is, you know, for most of us, if not all of us here watching this, we're able to see the level of evil and the level of worship into Satan. So we can see that side of things. Um, but why is it that many of us can't see that there's also a good side to it and that there's a God, you know? See, you mentioned the, the Great Reset and Agenda 2030. Maybe to somebody who's watching this who maybe has never heard about it, or maybe they've just seen the, those words on the horizon a little, little bit. Can you explain it to them what that actually is? What, that, what does that actually look like? Right, of course. So the, the reason why I'm saying that these plans are part of that agenda is because it's even in the names. You know, they said... We need to have, have this nitrogen crisis fixed before 2030. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that. And that is that the 2030 sustainable development goals that are part of the United Nations agenda, that is again connected to the standards set by the World Economic Forum and Klaus Schwab, sort of the mastermind of that, of that organization, has an idea for our world that he's very open about called the Great Reset. He said that was a perfect means to an end in that sense mm -hmm. of basically changing the way that our lives look and the way that our economy and our world functions so small to medium businesses will be gone will be out everything will be mass produced on a global scale basically working towards global governance and having like i said a very strong subgroup in society that is independent that provides 
food for people locally um, through, well, for example, the cattle farms and by agriculture, mm -hmm. that is something that would stand in the way of that. So they need to have control over the food supply through what they call hubs, food hubs, mm -hmm. where food will be distributed and they will say in an equal and fair manner that is good for the climate uh, and that is good for the population. So they will use all of these nice pretexts. You can see that also on the, the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. There are, there are 30 goals mm -hmm. um, where they use all sorts of nice words like distribution of wealth, um, equality between the sexes, etc. And it all sounds really good, mm -hmm. but if you see the way that they're trying to reach those so-called noble goals, it's always through more government control and governments that work together on a supranational level. Mm -hmm. So that's also why not just Holland is now facing these types of regulations, but you can see the attack on farmers all over the world. Mm -hmm. It's not a coincidence. It's an agenda that is carried out on a global level that is being pushed through government officials in respective countries mm -hmm. and we have a lot of people in our governments that attend the meetings of organizations like the world economic forum mm -hmm. and that even proudly wave the sustainable development flag uh, like our minister of health for example mm -hmm. so there are a lot of ties so you can't think or believe anymore that if you vote for someone on a local level or a national level mm -hmm. that they are there for just your national interests mm -hmm. they are at least very heavily influenced by an international one. They don't care about us and they never did. You know, they don't see us as we the people. They see us as we the criminals, you know, we the toxic polluters. And the whole depopulation agenda, I mean, that should be enough validation for anyone to see. Somebody please tell me how the hell this small amount of stuff just came to $218. How? How? Somebody tell me, this was literally three bags of groceries. Three bags. $218? Like, are you joking? Guys, this is not okay anymore. Like, we have a serious fucking problem here in Canada. Like, why? Why is this happening? This isn't even going to last a, not even five days. $200, $220, not even four to five days that's going to last. And that's only for two people. Like, this is not. We need help in Canada. Hello, somebody. If we were to focus on buying our foods from farmers and farmer markets, you know, the big chain companies like Asda or Walmart, for example, wouldn't stand a chance. As I was leaving the cemetery, I noticed that something's following the car, but there's no one behind me. still following me as I'm going 50 miles an hour. That thing can slide on high. Why is everything closing for good? Dollar Tree closing 600 stores this year. CVS closing 900 stores. Through the end of this year, Walgreens closing 150 stores. Outback Steakhouse has already closed 40 of its restaurants. UPS is cutting 12,000 jobs in 2024. Citigroup cutting 20,000 positions as well. eBay, why not? 1,000 jobs lost there. Microsoft cutting 1,900 positions. Expedia cutting 1,500. Cisco cutting 4,000. Apple cutting 600. It's entertainment too. Regal Cinemas closing 429 locations. Kroger's grocery store chain shutting down 413 stores. It's not affordable to be in retail anymore. Foot Locker closing 400 stores by 2026. Macy's will close 150 locations by 2026. Walmart already this year has closed six of its super centers. While the U.S. Senate has passed nearly a hundred billion dollars to send to other countries that Joe Biden just signed yesterday, most can't even find Ukraine or Israel on a freaking map, let alone Taiwan. We're paying money 
that we don't have as our economy goes down the toilet and American jobs die. Of course, we know we're going to ban TikTok so nobody can talk about it freely. If you ask me, it's all part of the Great Reset, you know, the financial collapse, you know, the universal basic income, the, the fact that we'll all own nothing and be happy about it, why the government owns everything, you know, we'll not be able to grow our own food, our own crops, you know, all resources for us, for, for humanity will have to come directly from the government. And, you know, if you don't step in line with them, then you're, you're going to get punished for it. Everywhere she goes, Oh Young Hao Yu is followed. What she buys, how she behaves, is tracked and scored to show how responsible and trustworthy she is. It's called the social credit system, and in one version now being tested, a person's reputation is scored on a scale of 350 to 950. And how you, with a good score of 752, is okay with it. In fact, most people are. Is that mechanism like uh, pushes you to become a better citizen? It's big data meets big brother expanding how the government monitors, understands, and ultimately controls its 1.4 billion citizens. Thanks to advances in artificial intelligence and facial recognition, and a web of more than 200 million surveillance cameras. Are people bothered by privacy concerns? We think uh, the lack of camera keep the safety is uh, really good. We can accept it. Companies are experimenting with the algorithms to help the government create the new national social credit system. The government also has pilot projects. In one, citizens are required to do hours of unpaid work to get benefits. And scores are docked for things like littering, a messy yard, gossip, even jaywalking. Video of offenders is shown on the local news. And information collectors like Joe I. Nee are paid to report on their neighbors. Her quota, 10 entries a month. Like the man who carried a drunk person home. A good deed, she says. Good social credit gets rewarded with perks like cheap loans and travel deals. But a bad score means public shame and worse. Amazon isn't just delivering packages these days. It's also selling a powerful new facial recognition software. Introducing Amazon Recognition Video, the easy-to-use API for deep learning-based analysis to detect, track, and analyze people and objects in video. It boasts that the technology can detect, track, and analyze people. Let's think about what those powers could mean in the hands of the government. Amazon Recognition Video uses the visual, what, temporal, when, and motion from the video to deliver high-quality person tracking and detection of activities like running, playing soccer, or getting into a car. Recognition can identify a person's face in real time by matching it against huge databases of photos. Amazon also advertises this person tracking feature. That means that whoever has the software could theoretically use it to identify people at protests or figure out when you're traveling to the doctor or to a religious service. The next, of course, common use case, as you could uh, expect, is uh, public safety. Amazon is already working with government agencies to deploy this technology. At the ACLU, we obtained records that show that Amazon signed a secrecy agreement with one county to keep details about the technology out of public view. They've also invited law enforcement to suggest new features, and they offered free consulting to help the city of Orlando build its own system. City of Orlando is a launch partner of ours. They're, it's a smart city. They have cameras all over the city. We analyze a video in real time, search against the collection of faces that they have, so Orlando is already using the technology. It also already has surveillance cameras all over the city on everything from light posts to police officers. Activating a city-wide facial recognition system could be as easy as flipping a switch. Body cams were designed to keep officers accountable to the public. But facial recognition turns these devices into surveillance machines. This can mean round-the-clock surveillance whenever cops are present. Imagine what that would mean for minority communities that are already over-policed. People should be free to walk down the street without the government watching them. In the hands of governments, technologies like recognition could make that impossible. You don't have a choice. People act like you have a choice. People don't feel like going to the stadium uh, when they might get infected. You know, it, it's not the government who's saying, OK, just ignore this disease. And, you know, people are deeply affected by seeing these deaths, by knowing they could be part of the transmission chain and you know, old people 
uh, their parents, their grandparents could be affected by this. And so you don't, you know, you don't get to say, uh, ignore uh, what's going on here. There, are, there will be the ability, particularly in rich countries, to open up if things are done well over the next few months. But for the world at large, normalcy only returns when we've largely vaccinated the entire global population. I was going to edit this out and I thought, no, I'm going to keep it in because it might help people become more aware of what's going to happen in the future. And, you know, whether it be five years, 10 years, maybe even 20 years, you know, what we're seeing there in that clip, it will eventually be the new norm, you know. So, guys, what was the one clip that you find most interesting out of the show? Let me know in the comments below. But there will be one more bonus clip added. But that's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed the compilation, smash that like button and subscribe button. And until the next video, look after yourselves. Stay safe and stay healthy. And I'll see you then. When the night has come. And the land is dark